by the way, Richard is doing a great job. Richard is up in Casper today, that's why he's not here. He did have the last week. He was on before. Well, I think I'll, I'll speak. You should do. Um, there are there are just two very focused but important points that energy sector is really challenged. Uh, only two, but they're but they're important. One of which is having to do with the whole part of the bought it up monthly Q and um, and sort of question that that says if there is a potentially identifiable regional. Um, and one of the examples is regional infiltration basis. Uh, that um, a project proponent, the, the WCP sets it up such that a, a project proponent working with the county, working with the local permittee and the new jurisdiction, they may be looking to develop, uh, have, if there's been an approved watershed infiltration out of modification plan, and identify opportunities to try to craft modeling in the feed, such that with a lot of caveats and a lot of hoops to go through, there could be a, a, the ability with executive officer approval to allow a project to contribute to, make use of a downstream, uh, not going through large US, but downstream, uh, say, regional infiltration basis, to satisfy essentially all of the Lid requirements for that project. And where the energy and for challenges come is, is they're saying the permit requires every project, regardless of whether there's an opportunity or not, to first maximize on site infiltration um, and go through all of the things that we talked about here and that you've been hearing and you've been to roll out. Uh, thereby not, not, not allowing a project to kind of demonstrate that it can meet its mid requirements in with this regional facility. So that's been a contention, that's been an issue that was debated a lot and discussed a lot. We, we did a lot to try and work through it uh, with, with the environmental group at the time. That's one. The other, is a little more, it, it looks like a nuance, looks like fine tuning, but, but it's not necessarily easy to, to implement has to do with the issue of when you have optimized um, infiltration, you are allowed, when you maximize infiltration, you're allowed to then look at uh, harvest and reuse or without transpiration VMPs before you can start looking at um, bio treatment and release or bio treatment partial release. There was a 40% minimum threshold to set up. Um, and the nuances of how that threshold would work and whether or not you could, uh, could go on and, and look at biotreatment. Um, it's, it's sort of a highly technical issue. Uh, I won't get into the details now, but um, that area, that, that piece they have suggested revised language, we think it may be a bit problematic in terms of trying to accomplish what it was set up. So those are really the two areas that, that the postkeeper I know that, that right now the decision on what to do next is in the hands of the region board staff. The county is prepared to meet with them and prepared to meet with the, with the staff. The region board has told the county, that's why we're here today, to press forward uh, with your training, press forward with your rollout. I assume that this August uh, 16th date is going to be the live date for the program. Uh, and, and don't hold anything up because of the challenge, so let's go over here. All right, um, so uh, now we have a lot to cover and we, we're getting this way, but uh, I'm Don, by the way, I'm Don Schroeder with CDM, Eric Strecker with Geosyntec. Uh, we've been working uh, with this program for the last two years for the county and for all of you. I'd like to get a quick show of hands. How many of you in this room were part of the public advisory uh, group process of PAG, the process of permanent advisory group process. Okay, so several of you, but a lot of you have not. It, it, the, the first one we had, first training we had last week, there's a few more of that. 
those of you who are, who are through the tank process, a lot of this will sound somewhat familiar, but this is kind of the, the final rollout. This is what we ended up with. Um, how many of you have, the next question, how many of you, how many of the rest of you are, represent the various cities or the county? Uh, have you been with the program? How many have been with the program more than a couple of years? And then is there anybody that's really pretty new to the whole program? Okay. There's several there too. So, so um, try to catch all of your the different audiences uh, at different levels of detail because some of you have really been living and breathing this stuff, some of you have been working with a lot, know the old program, but now you need to look at the new program. For some of you, the whole New development of program is kind of new, so you're stepping in at a very obviously a very critical point in time. We never did get this. Can you hear me all right back there? All right, I'll get my people. Let me know. All right, so I want to. Uh, okay. All right, all right. So um, I, I'm sort of over you. Uh, we're going to take a quick look, real quick look. Some of the things I started to allude to and I'm going to start to allude to is this overall status and what the training module are and how they're set up. Um, and the, the overall program and purpose, of course, for, for this particular block of training, last week and this week, is for you all who are working, presumably that's what you're here for. You're in the trenches, you're the program managers or, or operating with the, the MPS program at your respective permittees. So you need to have a good, solid understanding of the overall program and the keys and the pieces of what's changed and what's new. Because you're in, 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 in turn needing to then kind of coordinate this across your whole city or the county. Uh, but there's a lot more people who are gonna start next week training those folks, the planners and the plan checkers who uh, need a whole lot more help bringing up so that's what this is about, giving you the tools, coordinating consistency, and then the process. There are a whole lot of modules. Okay? The way we set this overall training up, there's some introductory modules, that's kind of high level. We'll hear those this morning. Um, there's some process overview modules, which drill a little bit further, and this group will, will see those as well. So we're going to have a lot to cover in three hours, four hours. Um, and then there's technical focus modules. Technical focus modules you won't hear today. Those will be part of the, the delivery for the, the detail folks, the at the counter folks, the planners who are going to be reviewing day to day. They won't see a few of the introductory modules. They'll kind of drill down further. So that's how the overall program is set up. Um, we want to familiarize you with the day to day activities and provide greater depth in the use of the model volume of the MP. Those are, two, um, uh, those are the two documents that went through the review and approval process with the reading board and the template. But there's, we're going to introduce you some other pieces too that you have to work with. Yes, ma'am. Is it possible for anybody here to show up for, I guess, a second half of the training? I don't think, and none of the training is public. Okay. Um, the, you know, one of the things we've talked about actually since the last time too, the next module next week is a full day. And in the morning, we're going to be covering some of the same material, not everything, but a lot of it, and really focused particularly on planners, plan reviewers, and, and, and you all guiding them. You don't have to come again, but you're welcome to. Uh, so the first the morning will be similar to what you're hearing here. The afternoon, later in the morning and into the afternoon, we're really going to get into the nitty gritty technical details of how to review a lot of things and how to, how to advise and, and work with developers uh, on, on the you know, technical nuances. Uh, so I think, and if you talk to Richard, the, the county is quite flexible in terms of who shows up next week, uh, who shows up in the morning. We're, we're encouraging, I think, an announcement just went out yesterday, sort of letting everybody know that it's particularly encouraging the planning staff in the morning. You don't necessarily have to stay all day. Typically encouraging the plan checkers, the counter folks, the people that are really going to be in the, in the trenches to be sure, for sure in the afternoon, but probably all day. So, 
Okay. Uh, so that's the technical control. Okay. Just real quick, you, you kind of know this. Things were submitted. It, okay. Now the other thing is, I should have asked this first. How many are you are North County or Santa Ana? Most of you. How many are South County? Yeah, there's, there's quite a few. So keep in mind that there are two permits, you know this very well, with different deadlines, and so forth. These documents, the, the high level documents, the, uh, the, were set up so that they can be used in both areas. We spent a lot of time trying to tease out the differences of where they existed, trying not to the differences of where they are. They're not important. Um, However, this training, because of the timing of the Santa Ana program, this training is focused principally on the Santa Ana program. There's lots of things that you'll hear here that are that are benefit from the piece of all counties. Well, when we come, other than this introductory module, we'll talk about the difference slightly. This is going to be sort of a Santa Ana permit based training, so when there are differences, it will be focused on Santa Ana. Uh, and of course, if you have a little bit different deadline, not that much farther down the road anymore now. I mean, you have to submit your equivalent to the number of um, You have a longer, much longer time in South County before you have to go live with the program. The, the, having to have this program rolled out and in place and working in the Santa Ana region is obviously an issue. South County submits in December, waits for approval. And then 180, 180 days after approval or acceptance or wherever the San Diego board is staff does, then you're on. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we, we wrestled a lot with the county and ourselves about how much we could try to get done in this short period of time and decided to focus the training, the detail training, primarily on Santa Ana Department because that's the, the driver right now. And then there is clearly an intent, uh, kind of intent to do some additional training prior to going live in South County. What exactly is the uh, SSMP on here? Well, I'm familiar it, with it with sanitary sewer agency. Well, it, 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 uh, unfortunately, the acronym is similar. It's, it's the same, SSMP. Yeah, it's, it's the standard stormwater plan. That's standard. Right. I think in the South County, in the San, in the San Diego permit, I think they call the equivalent the standard stormwater mitigation plan. Okay. And nothing to do except the little tiny you know, overlap area with the SSMP. All right. So, uh, so again, this is what I just said. The, the program documents cover both counties. We're going to primarily focus in this training in North County and the We've got three hours, now we're going to do 25 minutes into it, so we're going to try to move pretty quickly to get a lot of material. We will give you a 10 minute break after about the third or fourth module. Uh, we'll try to have a few minutes at the end of each module for Q&A, so that we're not waiting until, until the end. Uh, and uh, that was helpful last time. It was interesting. Some of the Q&A was very real and very important. We focused on some very narrowly focused pieces of the program. That's what we're doing today, and where the, the training is going. Any quick questions on the overview? If not, 